Hello again. In this video, we're going to talk about some synthesizer concepts, specifically using Vacuum, the built-in synth that comes with Pro Tools. So the first thing you're going to want to look for is the oscillator. In the case of Vacuum, there's actually two oscillators built in, VTO1 and VTO2. Now the controls you're going to be looking for are the waveform type and the octave selection. All right, I want to demonstrate what this sounds like. I'm going to open up some tools so we can actually visually see what it sounds like as well. So I have a, a spectral analyzer and I have a, an oscilloscope. Now the spectral analyzer will let us see the frequencies that are involved in the sound that, that our synth is producing. And the oscilloscope will allow us to visually see the wave shape that the synthesizer is producing. All right, so let's hear and see what this synthesizer does. So this next little module here is the mixer, and it mixes the, the sound or the output of these two oscillators. Um, so just to get started, I'm going to make sure that this one's turned down. Well, actually, hold on. I'm going to first, instead of, uh, you know, I don't want to be on any of these presets. I just want to click right here and go make sure factory default this is like the basic setting of the synth you know it's default sound if I just push a knob it, that's how it just basically is set just if you turn it on okay but I want to do this I want to um, turn the oscillator 2 VTO2 all the way off okay and just make sure that only oscillator 1 VTO1 is on and I'm going to move this slider, the, the shape slider, the waveform selector, all the way to triangle. And just take a peek at what the sound looks like and sounds like. Okay. So you can see that does look like a triangle kind of shape wave. And also you can see that there's a clear fundamental, like a, you see like a low peak. That's the fundamental, the note that we perceive. And then above that you see a whole bunch of other frequencies at lower volumes these are the harmonics that make up the sound okay now if I were to move this slider to I guess it's a knob if I were to move this knob over to saw and play the note watch how everything's gonna change okay now the waveform looks a lot more like a sawtooth as opposed to a triangle you can see that the harmonic content not only has it changed, but it's it's a lot louder or a lot it's a higher volume than it was when it was a triangle form. And I can keep moving this slider as I move it this this way. It, the waveform is going to turn into a square wave. Just so you know, on this particular device here on vacuum, let me just zoom in a little bit. It says PW50, PW0. That's PW stands for pulse width, so that's just another way of describing square waves, okay? So just various widths of the, the squares. All right, so the other control that you want to be concerned with is the, the range, which is like the octave selection, how, how high or low. So if I use the same exact key on my controller, um, and let's see, I'll just, it doesn't really matter where we are for this, but I'm going to go back to that sort of saw area. Okay, now... If I, right now it's set to where it says 8, if I go to 4, the sound is higher an octave, 2 it's even higher, so if I go below 8, to 16, it's lower, if I go to 32, it's really low, okay? So that's just the, the octave range that the, the oscillator is set to. Um, this knob here is a fine-tuned knob, so if I'm set to, to any of these settings here, and I just kind of adjust it up or down, I can just slightly tune the oscillator in either direction okay by the way in Pro Tools if you want to get any knob or slider or anything to like its sort of default position you could hold option down while you click the knob and the thing just snaps you're like it's right here I'm gonna hold down option click the knob and the thing just snaps back to like its default position whatever that is which is helpful a lot of times all right, now there's one other setting on this oscillator up here. If I move this all the way to wide, it makes the fine-tune uh, knob do a different thing. So instead of it actually really being small increments that it's tuning, it literally makes it a very large 
uh, spectrum of, of uh, frequencies or you know you might find some some reason that you need like really slow to control something a really slow waveform to control something else or you might you know get really high to you know might be used for like super super high frequencies now VTO2 operates let me turn this all the way down same way as VTO1 the only thing to mention that's a little different is um, it has all the way to the left it has not a triangle wave but it has a noise generator So you can see noise is, is very different than, than you know, triangle waves or saw waves or, or square waves. Um, it's just basically, I mean, you can see it, the wave shape looks just like, a, like everything happening. And you can see that it's pretty much you know, within the limitations, within the imperfections of the computer here. Um, it pretty much has like all the frequencies sort of represented at similar or equal volumes here. So it could be useful for many things. One thing is it can create like sort of like a breath sound to a note, like a wind player might add to a note when you blow into your instrument or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to VTO1. Um, we're going to move on to the filter. A filter, as it relates to a classic synth control, controls the brightness or the darkness of the sound. And it does this by letting only the frequencies above or below a certain cutoff frequency to pass through. So you'll find at least a high pass filter on, on most synths. And also, as I'll demonstrate right now, filters often have a, a resonance peak setting, which is a boost right at the edge of the cutoff, and it makes kind of a nasally timbre, nasally like tone to your, to your sound. All right, so let's look at where these are on vacuum. So you see these two modules right here, HPF for high pass filter and LPF for low pass filter. Um, so let's take a look at the LPF. All right, so when I produce a sound, okay, I'm, I've got only the VTO1 on and it's set to sort of the saw sawtooth area. So the first control that you're going to be looking for when you're dealing with your filter is the cutoff frequency. So right now it's, not, it's all the way to the right, so it's not cutting off anything. But if I move this down, just watch the frequency analyzer over there. As the sound's cha changing, you could see all the high end going away, okay? And if I go so far, I might even get lower than that fundamental and not really hear anything. All right, so I just kind of cut away all the highs by moving the cutoff point. So I can bring that all the way back up, okay? You can see all the high harmonics come back. I'm gonna use the high pass filter to do the same thing from the other side. Now you can see the low frequencies dropping away first, right? And really high stuff, okay? I could use them in conjunction for some reason to kind of filter only what I want to come through. Okay. All right, now, that, like I said, there's a couple other um, controls here, like there's the envelope amount, Right, which I have to explain what that is, um, and there is the the slope, and that's just how aggressive the cutoff is. Okay, it's like if it's just like sort of a gentle cutoff, you'll hear less of the filter operating. If it's a very aggressive one, you'll hear more of the filter operating. All right, and right, one of the most powerful things that you want to find on your synth is the envelope and your synth may have uh, more than one envelope in this case you have two different envelopes and by default they are designed to operate on two different things envelope 2 is designed to sort of operate on the on off volume controls of um, of your oscillators and envelope 1 is designed to operate on the on off volume controls of your filters okay so when you're looking at your envelopes, you got to look for these four things. I'm going to zoom in for a second. These four letters, 
ADSR. Those letters stand for attack, decay, sustain, and release. Like I was saying, there are more elaborate volume controls for your sound. Right now, since these envelopes aren't really set to do anything, um, if I push a key on my controller, instantly sound will happen. All right, so as soon as I push a key, sound starts. As soon as I lift my finger off, sound immediately stops. The key on my controller is just an on and off switch. When I push, it's on. When I release, it's off. That's it. You know, on or off. But the envelope gives me some um, control over that. So these four things, A, D, S, R, um, control different aspects of that. So A stands for attack. If it's all the way to the left, it's a fast attack. As soon as I push the key, sound starts. I push, sound starts. If I make the attack slower by moving the, the knob, it will gradually amp up to its peak sound, to the highest volume that that sound makes. You can hear a change. Here's it all the way to the left. Instantly just make sound. Move it to the right. It amps up to the sound. You can move it way over and it's like almost too much. You know, it depends on what you're doing. Now moving over to the S for sustain. This is not a time thing, like attack is how much time it takes for the sound to reach its peak when you press the key. The sustain is not a time thing, it's a level thing. Right now it's set all the way to the right, so the sound, once it's done with its attack, this knob will control the volume for the time you hold down the key. So if it's all the way to the right, the sound is just going to go to its attack peak and then just stay there. It's going to sustain there at that same level for as long as I hold down the key. But if I bring the sustain knob down a little bit, what's going to happen is it's going to go to its attack peak and then it's going to come down and sustain at whatever this level is for the remainder of the time I hold the key. Now you might hear a difference. Big difference. Here's with it all the way up. Here's with the sustain down a little bit. Okay, so that could be useful for like initial like attack or an initial pluck sound. All right now, going back to the D for decay, this is another time control. So that's like a control that that is is um, adjusting how long it takes to get from the attack peak to the sustain level. So if it's all the way to the left, you know it actually could interrupt the attack. You know, that's kind of odd, right? If it's higher up, it, that's a very fast decay, so it's going to quickly go down to the sustain level, or I can make it take a, quite a while to go from the attack peak to the, to the sustain level. And that's even more dramatic if I make the sustain level a little longer, uh, a little quieter. takes a while, okay? Keep this in the middle, and I'm going to make my decay like right down the center. And that's noticeable, okay? And I'm going to bring my sustain level up a little bit. All right, we hear just a little bit of attack peak, and then it decays fairly quickly down to the sustain level. Okay, good. Now, the last control here is the R for release. Now, up to this point, Every single time I lift my finger off the controller key, the sound instantly stops. The release is how much time it takes for the sound to sort of like fade away once I lift my finger off my controller key. Okay, so right now it just Im immediately stops. As soon as I lift off, it just abruptly stops. But if I just raise this up some, the sound won't just instantly stop. It will kind of like fade away. Right, and I can make that very exaggerated. It takes a long time to really fade away. You know, it just depends on what I'm going for. Okay. So that's the R for release. So this is attack, decay, sustain, release. Sustain is a, a volume control, basically. But the attack, the decay, and the release are time controls. Now, last but not least here on, on this particular synth vacuum, this knob here, the VEL, is going to control whether you're 
sound is touch sensitive or not. So if your controller is touch sensitive, you could actually turn this all the way up or any varying degree and make your envelope touch sensitive as well. So now if I turn this all the way to the right and I hit the controller key softly, the sound is soft. If I hit the controller key hard, the sound is louder and I have varying degrees. Okay. So that makes the sound envelope touch sensitive. Okay, so the other envelope that Vacuum offers us up here is this envelope one. And this envelope actually works by default in conjunction with the filters, okay? And this makes the filters pretty powerful. So again, it's just an on and off switch, a fancy on and off switch, but it's an on off switch for the filter. So now if I, um, you know, make, let's see what we got for sound here. Okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna turn on the other one, make it a nice rich sound here. Make this over to the square waves. Get my sustain all the way up. Okay, we got a sound we can work with. This one. I'm bringing this one down an octave. Now we got a sound. All right. By the way, when you have two oscillators or more working together, you can detune slightly one or more of them to richen the sound. It you know might make a chorusy effect or slight warble, and you know that could be good just to add some interest to the sound. Oh wait, hold on. That's going crazy because I'm still on this wide setting, which I didn't mean to be. I don't know how I got there. Go back up here. Okay. Um, now, it's gonna... Just a little bit. Okay, cool. All right, now, that's a nice kind of rich sound. Now I'm gonna go back to my low pass filter and I'm gonna sort of filter out some of the frequency. You can see the upper stuff kind of cutting back a little bit when I do that. Cool. Now, if I turn up the resonance peak knob, you can start to hear like I mean, you maybe even see, let's see. See that right there? That must be the cutoff frequency that this is, this area right here. And we're turning up the, like, right where the cutoff is, right where the, the, the filter is designed to, or is set to, like, back off the high end. There's a little peak right there. And that's what this knob's turning up. Matter of fact, if I move, watch that peak if I move the cutoff frequency. Maybe I'll, I can even sort of tune the... You know, kind of tune that peak to the, the pitch. Right? Okay, good. So now this envelope, if I turn this thing up over here, will be the volume control for for how much of this filter, you know, how, how aggressively this filter is doing its job. So it works the same way. So it's like opening and closing and controlling the filter. So that's quite a high resonance now that I, I turned the envelope on. So I'm going to back off the resonance a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to play with the knobs here. So. If I want it to kind of like do that resonance peak slowly, right? Or if I want it to be fast. Right? And then like, 
This is like how long it takes to sort of settle again. I like that. I like it being kind of quick. So that's like how long it takes for the, the whole filter and with the resonance and everything to kind of get to like its sustain point. I like, I like to be kind of quick there. Every sound source you put in through this envelope is gonna do different things, all right? But this is the how much of this envelope is working on your your uh, filter, okay? Your low pass filter in this case. Um, by the way, the knobs are interesting in vacuum. So if it's all the way to the right, you know it does what you would think. I have how you have it set here, but if you move it to the left side of the middle, it kind of does it in opposite. So it's like you can set things and just have a completely different effect just by, right? It's kind of interesting. Um, so, you know, it's something you, you can play with. Um, this, uh, by default, is all the way to the right, and for the most part, you'd want it on. Basically, this has the filter track you know the keys you're pressing with your controller so in other words the filter will just follow and and work on the frequency based on the key you're 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 giving as the source note if you have that all the way off it's just going to only kind of work with that one cutoff that you set here it's not going to follow follow the different um frequency areas based on the keys you're pushing so you usually want that all the way all to the right all right that's the filters One thing I didn't mention, which you know I should have mentioned, it's very important. This over here is the VTA, the A stands for amplifier. That is the just the overall volume of everything. So if that's off, you don't get anything. Okay, there's just a few other interesting things that we we should mention before um, you know getting off this thing. There's a concept on synths called modulation. And that's often associated with something called an LFO, which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. Modulating a sound is like just adding movement to it in some way. And you can use a low frequency, lower than the frequency of, of sound, literally like something that might pulse in like a second or you know, slightly sl faster or slightly slower, to add some motion or movement in some way to the sounds you're producing on your synth. So on this thing, um, we have this area here, which you know is MOD for mod, and we have some. We have over here. We have the source settings. Um, this is like how much of it, and and then we have like where we're sending this uh, source modulation setting to. So let's look at the bottom here. Um, LFO, as I said, is low frequency oscillator, and that's actually over here. That's over here, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can see that that light kind of flashing. So it, oops, as I move this, it says 4.13 hertz, right? As I moved it around, if I go all the way, the highest I could set that is 20 hertz. That's the bottom of human hearing. And then I can go all the way to the left and I could get 0.1 hertz or 0.01 hertz. So that's like not sound. It's just, it's just a little bit of uh, fluctuation. All right, so over here, I'm setting the source to the LFO. Um, I could turn up how much of that I want on my sound. Uh, it's actually, hold on, let me just kind of bring this back to nothing. Okay, now if I... Okay, so there's... It's, it's set on, let's see, the low pass filter. So basically, all those settings we just did, the destination of this this um, low frequency oscillator is going to here. So now you know, not only is the envelope working on, on this low pass filter, but so is this LFO, right? I could, I could make it be the pitch. Okay, so now the actual um, pitch of the oscillator is is being controlled by this LFO. Um, I can make it be, let's see, what is this, VTO and shape. So it could be the waveform that's that's uh, VTO1. Come on, get over there. So now this is gonna be changing, and if I wanted to you know, 
change a lot between these different waveforms. I could just turn the depth up. So it's like kind of moving way from here. Probably it's going from like this triangle area all the way up to this pulse area and back. And I could change the, the rate of that. Right, so I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. We can't get into every single combination here. But basically, just remember that you have this LFO down here, low frequency oscillator. You set its speed, and um, you could, you know, you set the source here, and the you set how much of it you want, the depth. You know, sometimes like too much is too much. That's kind of cool. And then you, you know, you can route that LFO to different, you know, other modules, other parameters of the sound. Um, also, everything doesn't have to come from the LFO. I could make it be this MW stands for the modulation wheel. So now only, it's only going to do it when I, well, hold on, let's see, that's set to vibrato. Turn this up a little bit. There we go. So, so I mean, I gotta. Sometimes you gotta just really play with it. So I, now I have it set on modulation wheel instead of LFO, and I'm turning the depth up quite a bit. And it's it's gonna be, it's acting on the the um, VTO waveform shape. And so now when I turn up the modulation wheel, I'm changing the waveform shape. You can hear the change. Okay. Um, also, let's see if I. Let's go back to this, or maybe even turn this all the way off here. Um, it also, the, the, the LFO has some default things over here. I can have the LFO and the modulation wheel like work on vibrato. Okay, I can have it work on wah-wah sound. And this again, this is the rate of that, the speed. Um, I could have it work on tremolo. Okay, so tremolo is is um, when the the volume fluctuates. Uh, vibrato, oops, is when the pitch fluctu fluctuates. Right? And uh, wah wah is like when the the filter fluctuates, basically, the resonant filter. Okay, so that's actually kind of fun. The last thing I want to talk about is the arpeggiator, which you're going to find on many synths. All right, the arpeggiator. So you got a little switch here to turn it on. And, you know, right now if I just play a note, actually I'm going to get shut this stuff off. Off, I don't want it. Okay, got just our straight note here. Now if I turn on the arpeggiator, okay, it's, it's on. And um, I play. I, again, I have a rate button here. And the rate, the rate button, I'm sorry, it's like a knob, rate knob, it's going to set, if you notice, let me just zoom in, if you notice, it says quarter, eighth, 1632. So it will actually fluctuate in time to your, your grid, you know, if you want it to fluctuate in time, you know, to the tempo settings of your, of your session, right? And I think it might even have in between. Yeah, it does. So that's eighth notes. Right? It just depends on the tempo of your, of your session. It's just kind of making that same note repeat. Because I'm only holding down one note on my controller. But watch. As soon as, well, or listen, because you can't see. But if I hold down multiple notes, now I'm going to hold down three notes. Listen to what it does. Okay, actually, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to, just for the sake of this demo, I'm going to turn the... um velocity sensitive thing off here just so everything kind of plays back at a loud volume so you can hear it better over my voice okay so now i'm holding on three keys and it's just playing those three notes in an upward motion right if i go to down it's going to sort of reverse that right and if i go up and down it's going to go up and then down if I go to R&D for random, it's going to just play those three notes in, in any order. 
so that could be really cool. And it, it just, you know, if I hold down even more keys than that, uh, let's see. Well, the patterns can get complex, and I could change. Right, and it's just going to sort of play through the notes that I'm holding down. So I could just hold down a chord and it's going to arpeggiate it. So that's actually a very fun feature. You hear it in lots of music. All right, so that is a somewhat quick overview of um, Vacuum. And we'll uh, discuss some ways to use Vacuum to, to make some classic patches or classic synth sounds next. All right, see you then. Bye.